got time to conclude. Thank you. Very, very thoughtful. Bhati, briefly, uh, I would like to tell. Uh, initially, we needed three things to get success in life. Although we can be different from all of us. The first IQ, the second was direction, the third was efforts. These three things you needed. Now we need to add certain new things. And one of them is EQ, emotional quotient. SQ, which includes social and spiritual quotient. So you need to be a complete package. Agar aapko safal hona hai, and I believe, in fact, we are guiding our students in that direction. So we just tell them about these three things. Ye to chahiye chahiye. Along with that, you need these things also. Kyunki aapki life ke directional and guiding directional guiding and controlling forces hai. thank you thanks Sachin. a very uh, insightful discussion thanks a lot Sachin, dinesh tarun for uh, taking out the time i think everybody loved it so now we can open it for questions uh, yeah Uh, thank you for sharing, as I said, very insightful ones. Uh, I don't really have a question. I just have things to add that sure. I believe as a career counselor. Sure. Uh, your first question was that what should we tell the students? Right. Of course, there's a lot of information. We are in an era you're talking about. I think the most important thing to me is the education system is there. All kinds of curriculums, boards, everything is existing. And children come from different varieties of families, circumstances and all. So what's most important to me as a career counselor is to contextualize the need of the student. Where is it coming from? Because see, as a, it's very important that I understand and make the student understand and there is an expectation of the family. There is a limitation of the system. You need a degree. We don't know what is relevant as of now. These are what is available to you. And so you have to make the most of it. So most important to me is contextualizing. That's what I believe that we have tests of career guide. Of course, There's, those are indicators that give us a direction which we contextualize in the context of the student's family circumstances, the curriculum the student is following, the school system, the city they are in, the opportunities that are available, that is uh, on the first. And another thing is, uh, we're talking of 21st century skills. Uh, I think skills, to me, what I feel is that it's important along with whatever degrees they earn is, Critical thinking, being able to adapt. Times are changing very fast. What it was pre-COVID, it's very different. Am I able to, are we making our students ready that tomorrow there is an upgradation needed? It's, there comes the interdisciplinary approach. The, to me, era of specialization is narrowing. It's going away. A psychology, as you rightly, very rightly said, psychology is important. I don't know, uh, like I cite this example, Facebook hires maximum psychologists. They need it sure. to read the minds of the people. And the robots and the machines will only work if they are connected to the human psychology. Because we are the ones who are going, going to die. And that's where the decision making skills comes into. So that is uh, what I wanted to submit uh, in addition to, uh, you know, your very valuable inputs. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Apologies to the person who raised his hand first. <laughs> uh, I'm Biju Toms from Bangalore. Uh, one of the, uh, first of all, uh, kudos to all the learned panelists. Absolute brilliant insights. One particular point which I want to re-emphasize is 21st century future skills is social skills. 
Why I'm saying this is, for the last four years, my university has invested a lot on a very, very remote, remote village to study what is the kind of social skills that we can imbibe. And we were shocked that those students are either as equal or in competency to those brilliant students who claim to be part of our university. We were literally shocked. So the social skills, we have invested a lot on that. In fact, three crores have been already spent on studying alone on this social skill project. The point is, that is going to be the one of the key critical area where we need to look at. More of it later. I and one important thing to all the career counselors here, if you have the opportunity and the willingness to work on this particular area, this is going to be one of the real disruptors that you are going to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Check, check. Uh, just wanted to add one more uh, pointer to the discussion about uh, skills and degrees. Uh, see, there are two kinds of people. One, or students rather, one, those who have skills, not the relevant degrees. And second, those who have degrees, but not the skills. There are IITNs who have failed in life. There are students, there are people who have uh, rose from, say, a local university from Kota, and they are uh, doing very good in life. They are happy. So those kind of people exist. In the long run, degrees do not matter. In the beginning, they might matter a bit. See, you get a leverage, yes. If you're an IIT and you, if you're an IM pass out, you get that extra edge in the beginning. By assuming that all those IIT and IIM pass outs have developed those basic skills which are needed to head start their careers. But in the long run, whatever they learn due to experience, that matters more than the degrees. And hence, once you start with your skill sets, up, uplift your skills in the, in the, during your work experience, you get a very uh, high in terms of life. So both of these are important. In the short run, degrees might matter. But in the long run, upskilling yourself shall be the key to success. You cannot sure. ignore that. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, panelists, for a wonderful insight and the, you know, the ideas and the views that we all heard. I just have one, it, it's not a question, it's not a statement, just, you know, a thought which came to my mind. I think because, you know, every country differs, the systems differs, the education differs. As a result, we cannot generalize skills are needed or not needed. Just a thought which just came to my mind listening to all this. And also, every subject is different, every profession is different. Medical will not survive without degrees. Design may survive. Anybody can become a good designer if the person is creative, imaginative, but nobody can become a surgeon until that person acquires that skill, learns, understands, and for that degree is required. So as I think it is as per depending upon different type of professions, different type of abilities, and also we cannot say, uh, we cannot avoid the fact multiple intelligences that we taught and teach, you know, students in the, uh, in the younger classes. Everybody cannot be a mathematician or cannot understand math, science, science. Everybody cannot understand physics. So there has to be a lot of exploration in this area. What a humanities child would do besides psychology? Besides, you know, somebody who do, does not understand any uh, science subject, does not want to become an accountant, does not love maths, what are the areas for that? So it's, it is something that cannot be generalized, skills chahiye ki nahi chahiye, degree chahiye ki nahi chahiye. I think it will, be half, it will be something that will evolve case to case basis and there will be certain degrees which will never go, which will never go and they will be very, very important every time in any times to come. This was just a thought that came. I thought I should share with everyone. Sure. Thanks a lot. And we are running short of time, so maybe we'll just uh, wrap up the Q&A and uh, start with the next uh, panel, right? Uh, thanks a lot for my fellow panelists. Uh, and uh,
So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And for the next panel, it's going to be an amazing panel. Now, why am I saying that? Because on the next panel, the moderator and our two speakers are entrepreneur experiential trainers. They are running their successful business. So let's begin with Richa Duvedi. She's based out of Gurgaon. Can we have a big round of applause? <laughs> She's an alumni of uh, St. Stephen from I am Ahmedabad. And she has also written the book, uh, 21st Century Sk by Hashay 2017. She has been a sub-editor at Business Today. The next person I would like to invite on stage is Divis Gupta. He's accompanied by his life partner and business partner, Sukleen Arora. So in case you want to ask them anything, feel free. Divis is an alumni of I am Kashipur. Uh, his company name is Ikigai Learning. You must have seen Divis Gupta, Divis as in the function, Divis Gupta on uh, Instagram, YouTube. He has done two Josh talk, one TEDx talk. And uh, my personal question to both of them after would be, I'm just giving a heads up is how to be a successful career coach which is the topic, and how to build a community. Divas has a strong community, and uh, Divas and Sukleen, congratulations on the car. I do follow your post. Great, so without further ado, I'll be handing over to the mic, and let's have a thunderous applause for our next panel. Thank you. So, uh, guys, the next topic uh, for the discussion is how to be a successful career coach, and I'm sitting with the two amazing people out here who have been uh, quite successful in building a community as well as uh, building a career around being a successful career coach. So the panel that we have today would be discussing how to be a successful career coach. I'll start with Richa. And uh, Richa, maybe you could uh, give me some thoughts and some insights on what would you want to say to the people sitting here if they want to be a successful career coach, what are the starting steps, as in where do they start from, uh, your thoughts? Um, where to start, is this working? Yeah, okay, all right. So where to start uh, today is a different question from where you know I may have started. So I started in 2004, and that was uh, show purely out of passion because you know I grew up in this very, uh, three bits kind of environment in a small town in Jharkhand, you know, where everybody was studying medicine and engineering. Nobody ever knew about anything else. I mean, it was not in our school, it was humanity section. You know, it was just PCB and PCM, right? So, you could doctor an engineer. So, I started at that time simply out of passion of saying that I want to help people know that there are careers out there. Because once I started working, I, I was looking around and seeing the interesting things people are doing and I was like, no one ever told me that you can do this kind of thing, right? So a lot of, I had to do a lot of my own research and you know, find out what tools work and what don't. We've developed our own career guidance tool. But today, if someone is starting, which is exactly your question, Pranav, I think today there is a lot of research already out there in terms of career tools and so on. You know, at the same time, I feel that a tool is a very limited way of being able to guide somebody because fortunately, a or unfortunately, I think mostly fortunately, human beings are very complex. So, you know, you can't just take a tool and uh, do a test and say, ki beta, aap architecture kar lo. And you know, ki, ah, you know, you should get into education and you should get into data. And it's very difficult to do that. This is just a tool. You need to understand many different aspects about that person, number one. Number two, you need to know a lot about careers. You know, just the fact that things are changing, as Surabhi has been pointing out since morning, you know, things are changing so fast, so that depth is really needed. So I think, one, that you need to build depth of knowledge about careers. Two, I think you need to build some coaching skills that, you know, how do you coach a student over and above just a, a test? And I would say number three, and most important, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, you have to build business skills. Because ultimately, you're a business person and you need to know how to deal with clients, how to build a brand, how to get people to know you. So I think if these three things are in place, I'll just summarize that, you know, coaching skills, uh, a depth of knowledge about careers and business skills, then I believe that there's a lot that can be done. Sure. Give us your uh, views on this. Absolutely. Uh, this sounds good, right? Can we have a lower volume? Perfect. Thank you. I could relate with what Richa said, and back in my struggling days or figuring out days, there was this path where, like a typical Indian student, 
doing engineering, then an MBA, and then thinking, what am I supposed to do? So when I have like, traveled the same path, I know what I have missed, what I could have capitalized on, and that's a realization. Starting from today, as Richard said, tools are there for sure, for sure. Work on the branding as well. That's where majority of the good counselors are missing the chunk. I mean, I'll be very candid over here. No sugar coating. If you really want to make a mark, you have the insights, you have a lot of research, you have all the tools, take the assistance of it. However, how much visible you are 